Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl here with the project for Not Too Shabby. Today I'm going to be using the October stamp of the month to create an elegant Christmas card. I hope you'll stick around and watch the process. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, Not Too Shabby puts out a brand new Stamp and Die of the Month set and the October 2022 one is right in front of me. It is called An Elegant Christmas, and here is a look at the stamp set. You have this lovely girl image, a nice window, some sentiments, and coordinating little images. Now you can buy it as just a standalone stamp, or you can combine it together with the dies. As of time of recording this, there are a handful of each left. So make sure to go check it out. I have links in that description box below for you. And for more inspiration using this stamp and die set, make sure to check out the other videos on the Not Too Shabby channel. I have been seeing lots of beautiful creations lately from design team members. For my card today, I'm going to be focusing on the stamp set. I will be stamping it and heat embossing it on vellum, and then I'm going to overlay it onto a beautiful piece of alcohol ink work that my daughter created for me. So I hope you'll stick around to see all that. As I start the process, I'll let you know about any other products or tools I add. But if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to be stamping one of the main images from the set and the Believe in Magic sediment onto a piece of vellum. I pre-cut that to 4 by 5 and a quarter, and for my ink, I'll be using Versamark and then Detail Gold Embossing Powder. I will end up making this a little smaller later, so I kept that in mind as I got the stamp set up. I knew that I wanted the dress to bleed off the left edge, and my sentiment went in the upper right. I prepped my piece of vellum with an embossing powder tool, and then I inked up my stamps and stamped it onto the vellum. Once that was all done, I brought in the powder and poured it over the sentiment and the image. I knocked off the excess and I did have a little to wipe away with my fingers, but when I thought I had good powder on there, I brought in my heat tool. Now when I am embossing vellum, I do make sure to let my heat tool heat up off to the side for about 30 seconds. Then I try to bring it straight to the area with the powder and melt that quickly. I find that this helps from warping or wrinkling the vellum. For this next step, I will once again be using the Versamark and Gold Embossing Powder, and I'm going to be tearing the edges of this piece and adding some embossing powder to the sides. I thought that this would help bring in more of the gold, and it allows me later, you'll see, to hide the adhesive behind that to adhere the vellum to my card front. I tore probably a quarter inch off all of the edges. The next step is going to be similar to when I stamp. I prep the vellum with the embossing powder tool, but instead of using a stamp, I just brought my Versamark pad directly to each of the edges and just swiped that along. Then when I had the ink on the edge, I poured on the powder and tapped off the excess. I did decide to go ahead and just do two edges before I brought in my heat tool, and then I completed the additional edges off camera, and here's a look at that finished piece. For the next step in my card, I brought in a little bit of help. On camera now is my daughter, and she is creating an alcohol inked piece for me with some Christmas green and red alcohol inks. Recently, we went to a little stamping weekend getaway, and one of the classes we took was an alcohol ink class. Now, I have tried for years to figure out how to use alcohol inks, and I've tried it many times and given up. So I decided what is better than to have somebody right in front of me teaching me how to use them. 
Now, I did get a few tips, and I probably could have done this myself, but it would have taken me probably 20 pieces of Yupo paper. My daughter, when we got in that class, had never touched alcohol inks before and seemed to be a natural. She ended up really loving the class. So I thought I would ask her to make me a background for my card, and not only did she do a great job, but I think she had a fun time. Now, one of her favorite things about the class was when we added foil to the alcohol ink backgrounds, so she did use some of my gold foil to add a little bit more metal. I did want the card base to show a little bit around the alcohol inked piece, so I brought in my cutter and I cut this down to 4 inches wide by 5 and a quarter inches tall. Then I brought back in my vellum piece and I added my glue. I tried to keep it behind the embossed edges and I also went in behind some of the lines on the sentiment and on the image. I then placed a big stamp block on this to help hold it down while it dried and I set it off to the side for about five minutes. While that was drying, I cut and folded a red card base and I cut a piece of white cardstock to go on the inside for the personal message. I did want to go ahead and decorate that a little bit, so from the stamp set I got out the little star cluster from the bottom left and a red and green ink. And I went in with each of the colors, three stamps in each corner, just to add a touch of color and a little something on the inside. The vellum piece was all dry, so it was time to get my card put together. I started by adding adhesive to the back of the alcohol inked piece and put it just in the center of the card front. Then I did the same thing for the white cardstock that went on the inside. Off camera, I did add a few gold pearls from my stash, and here are some close up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.